welcome you are watching a new episode of Melt I'm Ritvika Gupta shooting from home In April this year the MMA formerly known as Mobile Marketing Association announced the appointment of Amit Jain managing director L'Oreal India as chairperson of its India board of directors Comprising over 800 member companies globally and 15 regional offices, the MMA is the only marketing trade association that brings together the full ecosystem of marketers, tech providers, and sellers working collaboratively to architect the future of marketing. To know more, Anand Rangaswamy will be in conversation today with Amit Jain about his vision for the MMA and more. Let's get ready to melt with Amit Jain. Morning, Amit. Hey Anna pleasure to be on your show wonderful to have you here so to begin with uh, amit uh, tell me why is mma required at all in your opinion ah oh, you immediately come to down to what matters absolutely uh, so i am repeating the obvious uh, to say that the rate of change which we have witnessed in the last 18 months uh, uh, landmark being march of 20 uh has been more than the previous 5 to 10 years put together it is driven uh, initially by the pandemic and then the realization that uh, digitization or a digital interaction uh is a major work around to all the curbs which were set to us in the pandemic i would like to think we indians have uh, evolved uh, very very uh, strongly and quickly in the face of all this change and uh, uh, that is where marketing has been stood on its head yeah so the classical way we marketers used to think about uh, consumer journeys channels buying behavior has massively changed as the consumer goes omni channel yeah the consumer journeys now have become seamless they are online offline they buy offline they decide online or the other way around yeah and suddenly marketers are faced with the biggest challenge of their collective careers and this is where the modern marketing association comes in yeah our job is to empower the marketers of the future in terms of building the capabilities uh, and preparing them for this very very dynamic behavior of consumers the evolving channels go to markets ways consumers decide and how brands engage the consumers right you know i watched the mma from the time it's been active in india and uh, one of the wonderful aspects of mma is that the chairperson is an active chairperson you know normally it's a titular head in many of these industry bodies so as the chairperson of the mma currently what are your focus areas going to be what are the three four five uh, areas which you want to change or bring about a positive uh, impact or whatever that might be so you know the reason for existence of mma is to be in service with the modern marketers so that's our vision which is bringing modern marketing techniques and um, as the newly uh, appointed chairman uh, of the body in india uh my job is to make sure that mma does a great job of delivering on its promise uh to its members and the marketing community uh, at large yeah uh so to be perfectly honest with you there are no tectonic changes uh, which i'm bringing about in the few months which i've been around at mma precisely because i think our ceo monica uh and the board of mma have done a top job in terms of identifying what the priorities are for actually enabling and empowering our marketers and bringing in best practices and some of the pillars which mma has uh picked up uh are very very obvious as we look at what is the evolution uh happening uh the biggest pillar which we have picked up is uh marketing technology uh embedded within that is you know digital uh, uh and all kind of uh, data measurements uh the other big piece is uh commerce and i'm careful when i say e-commerce uh because it's not just e-commerce there's also social commerce uh, uh and uh, voice led commerce etc yeah the third big area is uh, no surprises voice 
not just in the areas of commerce, but in terms of consumer engagement, search, etc. Uh, the fourth is brand safety. And uh, the fifth is, of course, uh, you know, for any marketing fraternity, it's inevitable, which is creativity. Right. So tell me, uh, if we move away from uh, your MMA hat to your L'Oreal hat, uh, what are the areas of this modern marketing that you're describing, which you, in your L'Oreal hat, are embracing? You know, uh, MMA uh, has been doing uh, a couple of uh, very seminal studies uh, in terms of first creating the awareness uh, for the marketeers in terms of what are the big uh, opportunity areas. Yeah. And these opportunity areas are, for example, in terms of uh, uh, evolution of marketing capability and being, uh, uh, you know, a best in class marketing organization. So for us, uh, what is initially, as we look at it, uh, what's very attractive from a L'Oreal point of view is uh, the work which has been done in thinking through what is the appropriate marketing organization of the future. Yeah, what creates uh, a, you know a high performing marketing organization, and uh, where is the value created by marketeers uh, in this evolving scenario? Hmm? So, for example. Uh, MMA has done some very good work, which uh, coincidentally was uh, published in the Harvard Business Review. Uh, uh, they did a survey around 500 organizations to figure out uh, what uh, highly capable marketing organizations do, right? And this is around building customer centricity in marketeers through uh, building in exchange value and uh, engagement value. Uh, and enablement uh, of consumers. Uh, these are th uh, three big centerpieces of the study over there. And we found that to be very appropriate as our marketeers uh, uh, tend to answer the big questions in terms of how their organizations need to evolve. And very importantly, what are the critical capabilities which they need to build? Right. So, uh, you know, you, you brought up uh, the, the post pandemic world, you know. Uh, and uh, the impacts of the post-pandemic world. One of the fascinating changes I've seen is uh, uh, the performance of FMCG brands in this post-pandemic world on e-commerce, social commerce, and so on. So tell me, what is the role that uh, mobile plays, mobile and digital and modern marketing, as uh, you pointed out, in this whole post-pandemic world in the context of FMCG brands? See, the answers, Anand, are always embedded in consumer behavior and need. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so what we have seen uh, out there in the environment is the fact that consumers have dramatically reprioritized uh, uh, their spending patterns. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, we are seeing a serious category shift mm -hmm. as consumers allocate more money for food, health, wellness. Uh, within FMCG and for inevitable reasons, deprioritize uh, uh, going out, eating out, holidays, leisure. Huh? So you see a major category shift. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it, of course, is channel behavior, right? Uh, so the traditional go-to markets have been uh, challenged by the consumer who uh, either uh, is shopping online there's still not huge numbers from an Indian context, but it is a runaway uh, trend where a lot of the FMCG categories now are seeing double digit uh, sales coming out of uh, uh, online commerce, whether it is e-commerce or social commerce or conversation commerce. And the third uh, bit of it, the most important part of it is the evolving uh, consumer journey where consumers, as I mentioned earlier, are uh, describing a complete omni-channel behavior in terms of uh, flitting between online and offline. Huh? They might decide online and uh, shop offline or the other way around. Now, what MMA does in this is give a, a set of playbooks and toolkits to marketeers uh, to decipher this and engage consumers uh, in this. So we've got now a playbook for marketing technology. We've got a playbook 
for voice. Very recently, along with ENY, we did uh, uh, a wonderful survey uh, around data uh, and analytics and the data maturity of organizations. So these are the kind of tools which we at MMA are using to empower marketeers with the dramatic change in consumer behavior in terms of how they prioritize categories, uh, uh, how uh, they decide, and uh, how they are interacting with the brands. Right. So tell me, uh, do we need a retraining, reskilling of entire marketing forces, marketing teams across categories? Because they are brought up perhaps comfortable in the old structures of marketing. And now you have a modern marketing sort of behavior uh, change by the consumer. Therefore, the companies have to change. Do we need reskilling and retraining of a lot of marketing forces in this country? It is inevitable, uh, Anand. And, uh, uh, you know, it is predicated in the fact that our customers are behaving differently and we have to follow uh, our customers. Marketing, uh, you know, if it remains true to its adage of creating value for critical stakeholders, the consumers, the state, uh, uh, the customers, the channel partners, uh, has no option now to create a dramatically different set of uh, skill sets uh, in terms of dealing with this. Uh, the good news is that there are some sectors in the industry which have taken the lead on this, and there is an opportunity for some of us laggards to learn from them. For example, BFS, BFSI has, uh, they are clearly ahead of the curve in terms of their marketing maturity uh, with the evolution of the landscape. Hmm? Uh, needless to say, you know, uh, the mobile companies uh, and the big tech pl platforms, uh, they are cutting edge. Now, the good news is we at MMA are blessed uh, with a wonderful set of members who are representing these constituent uh, stakeholders which I'm talking about. Uh, so we've got a wonderful ecosystem of these cutting edge tech platforms of BFSI industry, of agencies, uh, both digital as well as research, and of course, then the brand owners. Uh, so this really uh, you know, creates virtuosity. Uh, our ability to learn on the MMA platform uh, from each other, given the sheer diversity of stakeholders, some of them who represent the future and some of us, you know, laggards, uh, you know, FMCG clearly has a lot of catching up to do, uh, learning from the best. So we do have a brilliant platform uh, to create the future for Indian market. Uh, Amit, tell me, uh, one of the wonderful sort of new things I've seen is uh, new distribution channels open for a lot of FMCG companies. For example, during the pandemic, uh, you saw Obviously, e-commerce becoming very big, but you also saw, you know, stuff like chocolates being available in pharmacies across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your products were available in pharmacies across the country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are you, are you as a company, kind of looking very hard at the distribution landscape and what new opportunities come up, and perhaps what old opportunities need to be junked? Yeah. Uh, so, no, a, a lot of it has been driven by the uh, entire lockdown behavior. Uh, so, guess what happens when the government allows uh, the essential shops to remain open? Hmm? So, the chemist becomes a general store. So, basically, that's what's driven, uh, 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 you know, like you said, chocolates in chemists, which was there in a small way. Huh? And your uh, products. Uh, so, our products were already always there. Uh, so, uh, you know, the chemists in India, it's wonderful. Since we don't have a formal pharmacy channel, uh, what the chemists do very well is they do a great job of uh, uh, prescribing. And sometimes I would, uh, you know, hazard, I guess, that even diagnosing. So literally, you will see somebody saying, uh, go to a chemist and say, Sarmadar Dora, and they will literally prescribe. So the chemists in India are experts of uh, certain categories and not just medicines. So the reason why L'Oreal products do very well uh, over there is, uh, you know, we have uh, products with uh, address big problems. Mm -hmm. So there's a problem solution. So for example, our categories like uh, uh, hair color, yeah, and skin care, 
which uh, address significant uh, consumer needs. The chemists do a very good job of interpreting which are the appropriate products uh, uh, for consumers. I've really heard chemists saying, "Acha, inka to char number rang chalega." You know that is how good some of them are. So now uh, many other categories are figuring out the beauty of the chemist channel. And if you see the latest quarterly result meetings, some of the uh, organizations have come out talking about uh, a big focus on this one channel. But it's not just about traditional channels, Anand. What's really interesting is the emergence of completely new channel. For example, hyperlocal, which is when all the shops were shut down, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, food uh, delivery companies or you know, just pure tech-enabled delivery platforms, they filled in the gap. So uh, there are a bunch of categories which have figured out that, you know, it's not just food which can be delivered home, but there are many other categories. So for example, at L'Oreal, we have really benefited from that because there has been uh, a very, very, uh, you know, strong uptake of loyal consumers who could not access their brands going in for uh, hyperlocal. Uh, deliveries. The third thing which has really uh, been driven uh, by the big change is the whole area of social commerce. Yeah. Uh, so now you've got a bunch of entrepreneurs uh, who are using online simple things like uh, WhatsApp, Facebook uh, to engage with consumers. Uh, and sometimes it's around influencing and uh, uh, order booking. Sometimes it goes all the way into fulfillment and delivery. So what we are seeing is significant shifts in the go-to market, not just the role of established channels, but the emergence of new channels as well. Uh, one of the biggest challenges for marketers like you or for marketing companies like you mm -hmm. is to keep track of all the behavior changes in the consumer and trying to figure out what is short-term change and what is long-term and permanent change. So how do you keep track of what is happening? For example, let us say, will this hyper-local channel be a channel one year from now and so on mm -hmm. uh, so in on honesty uh, you know uh, we are not uh, crystal ball gazers huh? uh, sure ultimately mma is a capability builder huh? we empower people hmm, uh, uh, to deal with emerging trends but we are not necessarily positioning ourselves at the clairvoyance of the future hmm? So I can give you my personal point of view over here, sure. which is uh, uh, you, a lot of the evolution which we are seeing is irreversible uh, right. in terms of consumer behavior. Why? Because the consumer has figured out that there is much more convenience in the way uh, they have altered uh, some of their buying behavior. And it is, you know, ultimately the best harbinger of the future is where the money flows. And we know, for example, UPI transactions, I, I think financial year 21 topped uh, 22 billion. Yeah. So India is among the biggest, uh, 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 you know, markets when it comes to digital payments, which obviously is a surrogate for the fact that at a lot of consumer behaviors, not just in products, but in services, uh, the way we talk to our doctors, get online diagnosis. And I can give you five other examples. So this is change which is driven by productivity, by convenience, and obviously by safety. Hmm? And I, I would think that we are going to see uh, this evolution continue for uh, quite a long while. Right. You know, uh, like I said, I've been uh, associated with MMA in some form or the other from the time it started in India. Mm -hmm. And one of the wonderful parts of the MMA was the annual board meeting where, you know, the chairperson and the entire board would meet physically. Now, mm -hmm. probably you wouldn't have met your core board members in a physical uh, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that is permanent change, not meeting physically and carrying on meeting virtually like you and I are doing today? You know, ultimately, uh, there is a basic human need. Huh? Uh, uh, we humans are social animals. And we need to meet informally, we need to exchange ideas and uh, give and take energy from each other. So I do not believe that the digital me medium is going to be a permanent substitute for any of that. What we are going to see is a hybrid future. 
uh, in the interest of convenience, productivity, efficiency, some of our interactions will become uh, permanently digital. But I'm confident that as and when uh, the situation allows uh, uh, it, uh, we would want to you know, meet uh, on a personal level as well. So that's something I really look forward to doing. Uh, I'm on a couple of other boards uh, where th the boards are having exactly these discussions saying, okay, you know, for the last four or five quarters, we've been meeting digitally, but we really look forward to uh, also having an in-person board meeting. So it's a fundamental human need. That's not going to go away, which translates in, uh, itself also, you know, apart from boards is in terms of how we work. And you must have, uh, you know, seen a lot of announcements of organizations now going for a hybrid way of working, et cetera, recognizing the fact that employees, whether they're board members or not, they need to interact, they need to exchange and, you know, give and take energy. Right. So, and the last question is a L'Oreal question more than an MME question. Mm -hmm. So tell me by, say, 2025, what percentage of your sales will come through modern marketing? or modern channels, not quite modern marketing. I mean, if you could just take a punt, I know you're not a clairvoyant. I know you don't want to do crystal ball gazing, but to get a sense. And maybe you can answer it in the form of what percentage of your media spends will go digital and how much will remain traditional and so on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Anand, this is pretty much in the public domain. Right. Uh, Loria globally uh, has positioned itself as a beauty tech company which is pretty much describing uh, how the future of consumer engagement is going to work. Uh, so more than the channels, uh, uh, you know, we are very clear that the majority of our consumer engagement uh, in the future is going to be interactive in nature, hmm? uh, which means obviously digital media over a period of time will actually overtake traditional media uh, to give you uh, one yeah. part of it. Uh, and uh, this is much more because consumers today seek interactivity, they seek intimacy with the brands there. Uh, uh, and uh, once you engage them in, in that kind of an idiom, they become among the best uh, ambassadors for our brands. That's what we are realizing. Uh, so, uh, you know, recently L'Oreal globally uh, declared its uh, uh, six monthly results, uh, what we call semester one. And uh, our brands have picked up market shares globally uh, across all major segments, which is driven by this commitment of engaging uh, consumers uh, digitally in an interactive fashion, because that's what really builds uh, engagement and brand intimacy. So we see that future playing itself uh, out more and more in times to come. So while you're, you want to engage with your consumer digitally, I hope uh, in your avatar as a uh... L'Oreal and as MMA, uh, you and I catch up soon, physically and not virtually. And thank you so much for this conversation. Yanan, thanks for the very insightful questions. And I hope you got the responses which, you know, interests your viewers. So it's thank been you, a pleasure talking to you. And that was Amit Jain sharing how the MMA aims to empower marketers of the future. He is presenting the Mel Cheat Sheet. Consumers are observing omni-channel behavior and have reprioritized spending patterns. Brands and retailers are experimenting with new platforms and broadening their channels. Some of the changes in customer behavior appear to be irreversible in the long run. And that's a wrap on this episode of Melt. You can follow us on social media. Our handle is ready to melt. And stay updated with all that's happening in the world of advertising and marketing with our daily Melt update on our website readytomelt.com. I shall see you next week. Goodbye.